Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is a flip of the Spellbinders April 2024 club kits. I will be, as per usual, making one flat, one layered, one interactive, and one pop-up card. I like making these flip videos to give you a lot of different ideas for how you can make cards featuring the Spellbinders Club Kids and anything from quick and simple easy mailers to pretty complicated and in today's flip video really thick cards that probably are not good to mail best to send with a present. Now this video can be kind of long because I am featuring four cards from beginning to end. So if there's one particular card you want to see me make, feel free to skip ahead to just that section of the video. Okay, without further ado, let's make these. Okay, so let's get started with my flat card. I am going to pull out my, initially I was thinking I would use um, just a couple of different colors, but I actually changed directions a little bit and decided to go with the full rainbow. And so I'm pulling out my Versifying Claire inks. These are a fabulous pigment-based ink, very similar to Versifying Onyx Black, if you're familiar with that. But as you can see, the, the shape of the ink pad is a little bit different and the formulation is slightly different even though it is called Versifying. Um, one of the things with pigment inks is that they are based on pigments which are natural materials that you would find. And so often you're very limited in, in the colors that you can have with a strictly pigment ink. And so that's why you'll find with the original Versifying colors that there are lots of um, earth tones and a very limited number of colors in that range. However, the Versifying Clear inks take that Versifying ink base and then tweaks it in order to bring a greater variety of colors. And so that's really the only difference between the two. I find that they both stamp beautifully, which is why I am um, stamping just with my acrylic block by hand because <laughs> these stamps, I feel, just stamp perfectly um, every time. They're nice photopolymer stamps. And then you combine that with a nice um, ink that is um, nice and easy to kind of ink up your stamp because you can really tell when that pigment ink has good even coverage on your stamp. I am, um, I don't always pull it out to use, but I am using my um, stamping mat. That's the purple mat that you see underneath. And the reason for that is if you're going to do a lot of freehand stamping like this, it is nice to have something that's got a little bit of a cushion to it. And that way, when you stamp, there's a little bit of a give. It can go into the mat a little bit as opposed to hitting a hard surface. And if you've accidentally over inked your stamp and you squish your stamp down too hard, for example, you might get a little bit of a blurry line. So all I've done is just repeat stamped uh, from me to you in rainbow order. And I originally stamped out um, things for all you do in one of the rainbow orders just to start off. But then when I was looking at it in the full, um, just sort of taking in the full card, I realized that the very last sentiment, which is the main one that I want to pop, really wasn't popping that much because the rainbow is so colorful. So instead, what I'm doing is stamping with my Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. And I've stamped that onto black cardstock and poured some silver embossing powder over it. When you emboss, what you want to do is let your heat gun heat up for a little bit maybe 20-30 seconds 
and then bring it to um, your paper. It doesn't have to uh, be too close. Once you start to see your embossing powder melt a little bit, then you can kind of just sweep your heat gun across your um, sentiment. And if you've never embossed before, it's it's really lovely to watch that uh, powder, which originally in its dry form is very dull and very grainy. And then when it's melted, it becomes um, kind of like an enamel, but it's, it's very glossy and shiny. And that transformation is just a lot of fun to watch. So what I'm going to do is cut this sentiment strip down to size, making sure that um, it is gonna cover up what I stamped out originally. And that way, this very last sentiment is, um, is going to actually stand out a lot more. Now, I did all of this on a separate panel. The reason for that was just in case I needed to start over, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see from the back of this, I could just toss that panel or flip to the back and continue stamping and then glue it onto my card base. If I was stamping directly onto my card base, I guess you could always, if you had a boo-boo, you could always um, glue another panel on top of it. So this could be pretty near to a... Um, strictly one layer card but really my flat cards are the purpose of them is just to be easy mailers so I'm not really striving for a single layer in fact my definition of a flat card is at most one panel or one layer and then flat embellishments on top of that so in this case my little banner sentiment is my flash uh, my little uh, flat embellishment <laughs> now onto my layered card. I think I might have mentioned this when um, when I did my haul video, which will release on um, a, a few days from now when the club kits actually open. But I, when I saw all of these different glimmer plates of all of these patterns, the first thing that I saw, I, I think there are supposed to be stitching lines, but really the first thing I saw was a tire track or something where I could make tire tracks or the tread, you know, of a tire. And so that's what I'm going to aim to do. Now there's one of the glimmer plates I feel is great for the outermost the wall of your tire. And that's the one that has a solid line going down one edge and then diagonal lines coming from it. So that's going to be my outside edge. And then there's another plate that I think would work really well as the center of the tread. And that's the one that has a bunch of V's, sort of like a nested V's. So that's going to be on the, um, on the inside in the middle. And then I've just got um, a couple of other plates in between that. And so what I'm going to do is I'll glimmer once with just those first four plates. And then what I'm going to do is remove the middle plate, the one with the Vs, and turn this around. And then I'm going to glimmer on the other side to get the other half of my tire tread. And it's a little bit tricky to do. I actually had to do this a second time because when I did this the first time, and you'll see it, I'll, I'll show both, um, I left too much of a gap in between each of these plates. You really just want just like a smidge of a gap. And it is nice to tape them down so that they don't move on you and they stay in place. Probably the hardest thing to do is um, positioning the, um, the plates, the three remaining plates that I want to glimmer on the opposite side to get my full tire tread pattern. But what I did was I just have some washi that marks the edge of where my pattern left off. And it kept on grabbing, so I had to roll my <laughs> my sticky tape back so that I wouldn't grab onto my um 
my panel before I was ready. But as I was saying, I've got some um, washi tape that marks the edge of that middle plate. And I use that to line up the right side of my pattern. What I found when I did this the second time is it's easier to just let your plates cool off so that you can handle the plate. And so I definitely recommend that. That's what I did the second time because it was really hard to try to position this on the hot surface of the glimmer. And so this is one of those times where it uh, might take a little bit longer, but it'll be a lot easier to just take the plate off, let it cool, and then position it. So you can see the difference between that leftmost one where um, it's a larger gap and the one that I'm actually going to use where it's much closer together. And I did, um, I did foil the negative as well, just because uh, it's a really like, nice pattern, so I definitely wanted to keep it. And so that's how um, this card is starting, but I've also pulled in. Now, because most of the club kits this month have a sewing theme, I thought I would do something that's not sewing <laughs> at all. And since um, I've got this big tire track here, I decided to bring in my Gnome Drive collection, which I think I picked this up on Super Sale um, a little while ago, and I haven't yet crafted with it, so I thought it would be fun to bring out. And I'm not going to actually put a gnome onto the card. I just want it for the car and as well for the sentiments, which have a lot of sentiments around um, sort of driving, you know? And so I've got my car assembled and I'm going to try to keep everything really monochromatic. So I did use a, um, black glimmer and I've done the same thing where I stamped motoring by to say in clear Versamark ink. And then I silver heat embossed that onto some black cardstock. And I've got my car assembled from uh, flat black cardstock, but then I also used some of Spellbinder's new glitter cardstock, which by the way, die cuts beautifully. I did run it through my Gemini, which will cut through anything really. So, um, so I'll have to run it through other machines just to see, but it, it die cut just fine through my um, Gemini. And I've used just a hint of that gl uh, glitter cardstock on some of the elements of the car. And now I'll go ahead and just prop this up on with a little bit of low profile foam. I have it in black and white, so I'm gonna use black since my car is black. And I'm gonna use a little bit of 3D glue gel on the side view mirrors because they, they look a little bit um, uh, kind of, they're just hanging out there. I really want to make sure they're secured because they look like they are more at risk of getting snagged on something. And I will show a close-up look of all my cards at the very end, but that is my flat card complete. Now moving on to my interactive card. So this card will be a shaker card, but what you might notice is that the large die of the month has this beautiful sort of a pincushion jar. I've actually never seen one of these in real life. So the top part of it is actually um, meant to be a pincushion. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to turn this into a shaker frame. Now, what's cool, and I'm I was really happy to see this, is that the die will actually put in some slits that give you a little bit, it's maybe like half cut through for you. So all I'm aiming to do is just to connect those lines. So where one slit ends, I just aim to um, cut that so that it meets up with the next slit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm even freehanding some of this. I, I use my ruler, steel ruler, where I could, but there are only a couple places where it's a straight line. 
um, most of the bottom and the top, there's a lot of a lot of curvy lines. This one's the trickiest corner because you kind of have to cut along um, a curve, but it doesn't have to be perfect because I think there's going to be so much more going on with this card that that's probably the least of what anyone will notice. Um, now, just because I happen to be really uh, picky about these things, I am sanding down some of those rough edges where I made my cuts. So if you're picky about these things also, an emery board is really good for this. But honestly, like I said, with that one tricky corner, it's probably not going to be all that noticeable because once we have shaker bits in here, I think that's going to be the thing that people are going to be looking at. Now, a dotty tape runner is great for something like this with lots of curvy shapes and that thin, it's, it's maybe about a quarter of an inch, maybe not even. And I've run that along the back of this uh, jar and I'm attaching some clear acetate to it and I'll just cut around you know, the edges of that just to trim that off. So that's gonna be our shaker window. I've got some lovely pattern paper here that is from, I think a craft kit that I have. And I've pulled it out because I actually have a collection of buttons that I think came from that same craft kit. And so I want all of the colors to coordinate. Now I've got this bit of vellum, which I did trace around my jar to see where to cut. And I'm gonna put that vellum behind my um, shaker jar just to, just so that the pattern paper behind there will still be visible, but it sort of, sort of knocks it back, softens it a little bit, just so that um, it's not vying for your eye's attention because there's gonna be, buttons and other things that I put into this jar uh, that will shake around. Okay, so then I I was thinking I would put a label on this jar and I just cut out a rectangle that I was just going to put right across, but that felt too, it felt too much. It felt too solid. So plan B was to um, just die cut from the small die of the month, which has some really lovely stitched sentiments and I picked the sentiment hello because it fits well to be honest it's it um it is nice and short and um it will fit on the jar completely and you know with a good amount of room all the way around and then I also die cut hello a um a second and a third time uh the two that I will use though are the orange and the gray. And so the gray I'm using is a bit of a drop shadow to help the sentiment stand out a little bit better against all of the shaker bits and against that pattern paper. Now, the large die of the month comes with a lot of little sewing notions. And one of them that's really cute is this little um, spool of thread. And it's cool, it's just two simple layers, but there's also a die that cuts out just this single, kind of a single thread that, that curls around a little bit. So I'm attaching that to this spool and it's just gonna be a nice little decorative element running across the bottom of my jar. And now it's time to start to fill my shaker. So I've got, um, I'm just doing a little bit of a preview at the moment, uh, just to pick out the colors of um, of the buttons that I want to use. And I did double check to make sure that the foam I'm using is going to be thick enough for these buttons to to still shake around because they're actually fairly dimensional. These buttons. And uh, what I'm going to do is I actually end up having to cut my foam strips into thirds because the edge of the jar is it's really it's really thin and so you want to make sure that as you're applying foam around that frame of your jar that it isn't going to be visible from the front and so 
all you need to do is just wrap your foam because it's not very wide it's actually easy to to kind of um have it curve and match the curvature of the jar but what you want to make sure you're doing is to completely enclose that jar so that you don't have any openings and nothing that's inside your shaker can actually fall out. And then I've added some extra foam behind the that spool of thread because I don't want my shaker bits to fall behind the that spool of thread because it's not going to be visible anyways and I'm going to end up having to fill this with more things in order for it to feel like it's full so I'd rather just block it off and what I've added are if you're anything like me and my mom even if you have a jar that's dedicated to say buttons there's always going to be some extra things in there as well so i've thrown in there the thimble which you have a die to cut out from the large die of the month and as well some safety pins now the die does put have uh, opened and closed safety pins i've only included the closed ones and then i'm going to attach the vellum to the back of this shaker to completely enclose everything and that way my shaker is a um, nice independent unit here and I've actually put this onto a mini slimline card and I've made this mini slimline to three and a half wide by six tall seems like a really nice um ratio dimension card for this size of jar because it's just big enough to fit this some of the elements will hang off a little bit which is fine I'll just make an envelope that's um, slightly larger um, so that it will fit what is hanging off the edge there but I think it helps to add a little bit more interest to have things kind of um, hanging off the the edge of the jar a little bit and the last touch is going to be to add my sentiment and so again I'm going to use a dotty tape runner to attach this the dotty tape runner is great for you know delicate die cuts like these because it's just a lot of little small dots of adhesive so it will grab on to where there is cardstock but um because it's just small little bits of adhesive as opposed to a solid strip of adhesive, it can really just, you know, work itself around all of those curves. And that pretty much completes my fun little shaker jar of sewing notions. So really had a lot of fun making this one. And, um, and I think that you could fill this up with a lot of different things if you wanted. Um, you could probably cut off the pincushion top if you just wanted to make this a plain old jar and then fill it with other things. I think um, that could be a lot of fun to explore what else you could put into this jar. Okay, so then this is my final card, my pop-up card. And this card I originally saw on Sam Calcott's channel. She makes hers slightly different. So um, I still encourage you to check out her channel. I think she calls it a, a stadium wave card. Her card is top folding and I've decided to turn it and make mine side folding. For the outside of the card, I'm, I'm going to keep it really simple. I mean, this is going to be um, a nice clean and simple card from the outside. And really, if you need this as an extra idea, this could be a flat card too, if you want to just stop <laughs> at just adding this stamped sentiment along with the die cut word. So I've stamped out the word sending from the clear stamp of the month, and then I've die cut the stitched word thanks. So the full sentiment will be sending thanks. And I think that could be it if you wanted it. Um, maybe you could add another little die cut of a sewing notion from the large die of the month. I think that would be really lovely. But I'm going to keep it nice and simple because for me, pop-up cards, it's all about the inside of the card. And I like to make my pop-up cards so that they're meant to be on display. So most of the time, you're not going to even really see the outside or the front of the card. And 
In this case, I really wanted that very stark difference of the outside just being black and white and the inside being really, really colorful. So I've got some pattern paper here. This is, um, this is actually from Crafty Meraki. It's a really cool, I like the size um, paper pads they have. It's six by eight and a half. So I had this bit that was left over and then I found this other pattern which works really lovely with the rainbow effect that I wanna have on this card. And so I cut these actually to smaller than six by six, which is the size card that I'm making today. It's actually um, five and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And, but you could definitely go with maybe uh, five and three quarters if you wanted. I just, for some reason, really like three, um, cutting my mats three sixteenths of an inch smaller. So that's just what looks good to my eyes. And what I'm gonna do is aim to get the outside borders um, nice and even. I tried to lift this a little bit, but the adhesive that I use is pretty strong. Once it grabs, it really grabs, even though I've got a little bit of liquid adhesive to help give me a little bit of wiggle room. But if you draw really thin lines of liquid adhesive, those tend to grab pretty quickly too. So uh, I couldn't lift that back up, but it's not too it's not too off. So I've got my second piece down. And the reason why I like to leave a little bit of a border is because you don't you don't want to get too much of that cardstock close to the fold of the card because this card is already gonna be really bulky. And so I wanted to make sure that um, I was steering clear from that center, um, the fold of the card. Now, from the small die of the month, you have some really fun little die cuts that let you t uh, create these embroidery um, floss, uh, I guess they are spools maybe, and assembly is really easy. You have the one large piece that will be your foundation layer, and then your next die will cut out three, um, I guess, little detail layers of your thread. And I'm using the same color for both. If you wanted, you could maybe go with like a darker and then a lighter to, to just get more depth. But I'm gonna use the exact same color on all of the layers here. And you've got a, two curvy bits for the ends and then you have this middle section here. So it just gives you a little bit of extra dimension, a little bit of detail of the individual strands of embroidery floss. And then there's a second um, set of dies that will allow you to cut the little, you know those little papers that are wrapped around your embroidery floss? So that's what these are. So you just layer one on top of the other and each, um, each, embroidery floss um, spool here requires two of these. And you don't have to be too overly precise um, with the first uh, layer of threads that you put down because the label is actually going to cover up those ends. So just get them close enough and it'll look great. Now for our actual mechanism, this piece has been cut to uh, nine and a half by one, and I'm scoring at half an inch, one and a quarter, two, and then five and three quarters. So this is a nine and a half inch um, stretch by one inch. So nine and a half long by one, and you wanna score it at half an inch, one and one quarter, two, and five and three quarters. And then you just wanna fold this so that the the everything's a mountain fold except for the line at one and a quarter, that's a valley fold. And then you'll end up with a little stand like this. You'll need nine of those. And I made um, nine embroidery flesh uh, spools as well, all in rainbow colors. 
So what you want to do is um, the little, the end that's going to, that had that half inch glue tab, that should be towards, um, really I put it towards what I would consider the back. Um, instead, that way you can hide it a little bit better, but I don't think it's really going to be all that visible and, and regardless. So I did pay attention to order everything so that the glue tab where we made this little mechanism is actually on towards the back. You see me organizing it now. Um, but I think ultimately it's not going to make a huge difference because you're not going to really be able to see it. But I did want to really make sure that I kept everything in rainbow order. Now you want to start to um, glue these together. You only want to glue them so that they overlap by half. So this is one inch um, tall. So you only want it to um, overlap or glue down about half an inch. And once you get that first one set, what you can do is you can actually look to see with your next piece if it actually lines up with the piece that's two down from it. So with the green, I'm seeing if it lines up with the orange piece end to end. And then you know it's kind of even all the way. So again, with this light blue, I'm aiming to line it up with the edge of the yellow piece, the, the one that's two down from it. And liquid adhesive is a really good way to go with this because then you can really take all the time that you need to to just nudge things around, really make sure that they are exactly where you want them to be. And you just keep on going. So there's going to be nine of these. Um, and that was Sam's recommendation. She made her card originally with eight, but recommended nine so that your card will lay down flat. With her card, I think it makes more sense um, to do that because she put her design on the top edge where I'm going to make mine so that it stands and it's visible or would look nice either flat down or standing um, on the side so that it works either way. And so once you have all of these attached, you can kind of see how it's springing open a little bit. And that's that's how it's going to attach in your card. So now we just glue this into the middle of our card. I'm only putting adhesive on the red piece. That's the, um, the final piece on one end, the bottom end. And I'm putting it up close to next to that score line but no, definitely not over it and then what I want to do is only put adhesive on the pink um, mechanism or the uh, final one on the opposite end and then I can close my card down flat. Now there's a lot of layers and this card is very, very bulky because the layers don't end with just this mechanism. But you can see it's a lot of overlapping cardstock. So this is definitely a card that you want to maybe include with a um, a gift in a box. You might want to make an umbrella box with it. And so now I'm all I need to do is attach my embroidery floss to each of these mechanisms. The only tricky thing here is that you want to make sure that when you lay each of these into your card, that it doesn't peek out of your uh, six by six. Well, I'm using a six by six. So I really want to make sure that wherever I attach this, it stays within my card. And I started by putting adhesive on the embroidery floss, but it's safer to put adhesive on the actual mechanism so that you don't accidentally glue anything down uh, where it shouldn't get glued down. So you start, you'll see me start to do that here. And the easiest way I can tell to position is just to start closing the card down and make sure that it's everything still, still fits. And for the right half of the card, I'm attaching it on the right side of the mechanism and on the 
left half of the card, I'm attaching the embroidery floss on the left side of the mechanism. That way, when you have this open, everything sort of points towards the center and it displays a little bit better. And so I'm going to continue to do that until I've attached all of them. Now, I thought that maybe I wouldn't be able to attach the two on the very ends, so the pink and the red, but um, it actually turns out you can attach those just fine and, and everything will still open and close. There's, there's just enough room. So these embroidery floss um, spools, they, they are just the right height because <laughs> they will definitely fit um, on a 6x6 six six card like this. And see how bulky that is when you close it down? It's it's super bulky. There's no way this will go through the mail. <laughs> so um, I've also pulled out this sentiment from the clear stamp of the month, which if you get with the uh, coordinating die, there's actually a die that will cut out this particular sentiment, which says stitched just for you. So I think this would be a really good card to include with something that maybe um, maybe some cross stitching that you've made as a gift and so or some sewing fabric maybe that you've made as a gift I think that would be really fun and so I've got that sentiment but it wasn't I wasn't too sure um, how I wanted to attach it or where I wanted to attach it so what I am going to show is I'm gonna show how I made the little mechanism that I ultimately ended up creating to showcase the sentiment right in the center of this um, card here. And I, instead of just, you know, keeping the finished version with all the final stuff, I have included my the video portion where I was really just kind of playing and figuring out how to do it. And then I'll show you the actual measurements for what you'll need. But I wanted to keep this in just to give you an idea for what my process is. So usually with these um, style of cards, there's this X pattern mechanism that you can make, which allows you to sort of attach things on an angle like this and then have that front portion be flat across. So that's just something in my head that I um, am familiar with in terms of common mechanisms that you might want to use on cards. So this is just four pieces of cardstock that have been glued together to form this X. And what I'm going to do is just, just dry fit this and temporary, do some temporary tape to put it down um, as I kind of figure out what's going to work and what's not. What I realized though, as I was fitting this onto this center portion here, is that this X mechanism is, it works a lot better if, um, if you don't have a very severe angle. Like if you're actually opening something up to say 90 degrees, it works really well. So what that led me to is um, I needed to create an additional little V shape. So here I'm just cutting up scrap paper and gluing them together until I have a mechanism that works. That's kind of how I figure these things out oftentimes. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just creating another angle, a little bit of a V, and I'm going to tape this down and see if this helps to make everything sit up a little bit better. And what you'll find is that um, this allows you to actually have something that actually will kind of uh, push forward more. And that worked out really perfectly because that allowed for the, the, um, this length of sentiment to actually still fit because it can only, it needs to fit within the recess of the fold. Uh, folded mechanism 
in order to still fold down flat and be hidden inside the card. So you can see it. I'm trying to figure out how how long <laughs> and where does this need to get attached. So again, some temporary adhesive. I'm going to attach that to that front portion of the X and that looks like that looks like it'll work. And so now that I have a rough idea of how the mechanism, you know, what shape of a mechanism I need, then I cut uh, a proper one. And so I'll go through that with you now. So what you'll need is a stretch. Um, that's my, my prototype one. So what, that's what we're aiming to mimic. So I need a piece that is one and seven eighths wide by three eighths tall. You actually need two of those and you want to score that at half an inch and one and a half inch. Then you need a second piece at three quarters of an inch wide by three eighths of an inch tall. And that one actually doesn't need to be folded. As it turns out, I folded that, but you really don't need to put a fold there because that's what's going to allow us to keep a straight um, sentiment on top of this. And I actually cut a fourth piece, but you end up really not needing that. <laughs> so then all you need to do is from the longer piece, you just want to put glue on that shorter. Um, this piece is like three eighths of an inch by three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to glue half of my three quarters of an inch long by three eighths of an inch tall piece to that. And then on the other half of that three quarters of an inch long piece, I'm going to put adhesive and glue the other mechanism to it. So I have something that looks a little bit um, like the, it almost looks like a chromosome to me. <laughs> so, so that's what we have. And this actually turned out to to work really well because it gave me, as I mentioned before, some extra um, kind of extra length so that I could center my sentiment a little bit better and have it still fit inside my card. So this is kind of as good of a freeze frame as I could find to show you the shape of that mechanism. But now I've got two half inch um, glue tabs on the other end and that is what will get glued into my card and again I like to always do a little bit of a dry fit even though I, I made this based on my prototype it's still always nice to dry fit. So here I'm going to glue this so that the raw edge the cut edge is right up close to the folded edge of um, one side of my mechanism. I'm going to put glue on the other um, glue tab. Now this needs to get folded down and onto the opposite side of um, the mechanism that's next to it. So one's on the lighter blue, the other one's on the, on the um, medium blue. And then you've got your um, platform here that this is that three quarters of an inch by three eighths of an inch section. And now I can glue my sentiment on this. But again, I need to make sure that that sentiment can tuck into the fold, like into that blue uh, fold there. And it does. So that is how I created this um, little mechanism here. Liquid adhesive is great because it gives you time to like move things around and this fit perfectly to where you don't see that mechanism when you're looking at it straight on. Okay, so here's a final wrap up of the four cards that I made. This is my flat card featuring the clear stamp of the month. And I've just done some rainbow stamping and some heat embossing in silver. Next is my layered card, which features the glimmer of the month, which I have aimed to kind of create a tire tread pattern. And then I brought in Gnome Drive for the car, some glitter cardstock by Spellbinders, and as well the sentiment set from Gnome Drive. 
Next is my interactive card, which features the large die of the month, and the small die of the month is where I got the hello sentiment. And I converted the pushpin jar into a shaker frame. And I've added some real buttons, but then I put some fake die cut safety pins and thimble inside this jar, which is a lot of fun. And then finally, my pop-up card features the small die of the month. It's got that lovely stitched thanks on the outside and sending is from the clear stamp of the month. And then on the inside, we have the embroidery floss from the small die of the month, all in rainbow colors. And the stitched just for you sentiment is from the clear stamp. And I use the coordinating die to cut that out for this um, sort of a standing wave. But you can see it, you can lay it down flat or you can stand it upright and it displays beautifully. Thanks so much for catching my flip video today. I'll leave links to all the products that I use in the description box below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!